How does a man go from this to this? How can you be sure you won't have the dismal and unrewarding life experienced by other married men? This video will show you how it happens and what to expect. Those magic words she says, I love you, simply mean, I think it's time I started controlling you. You enter a relationship with absolutely no idea of that person's moral character. You automatically assume that she is stable and sane because you don't notice any immediate warning signs. Unless you met your girlfriend during a heroic act, or she happened to be the kidney donor who saved your life, you probably have no idea what she's actually like. You most likely met her in a nightclub or a social function, so you really are putting the path of your life into the hands of a total stranger. Superman, as Clark Kent, is able to see the cold and dismissive side of Lois Lane, and what Superman should really do is ignore Lois Lane and enjoy his single life. But you don't have his super insight, so you will have to make an assessment at the beginning. With no immediate warning signs, it all seems good. You don't realise as a young man that you are in the infatuation period, which lasts for a maximum of 18 months, and after that, the rest of your relationship is likely to be a tedious bore. After about a year, you find that you'll begin to struggle to make conversation after you've found out everything about each other. This is because you have, intellectually, nothing in common. Ironically, this is when you will likely plan to get married. Guys beware, a lot of girlfriends will try to assess how strong your feelings are towards them and will hint that you propose so that they can make a judgement of your level of commitment. This doesn't necessarily mean that they want to get married, although they think they do. But you agree and suddenly you have lots to talk about planning your wedding. She will of course dominate all the planning and organising and you will probably let her, reasoning that this is her big day. Only later, years later, do you realise that a man should never marry a woman who fantasises about a big, expensive and elaborate wedding. She will have been planning it for most of her life up to this point, including the types of flowers, the arrangement of the folded napkins, the menu and the clothes worn by the orchestra. It will typically be a display of one-upmanship over her friends, who you know she doesn't like because you've heard her complain about them so often. The big day arrives and you find that you've already been given a set of instructions by her about how to behave, what to say, how much time you spend talking to people, which people, how you should pose in photographs, how much you should drink, etc. It's all a form of control. The honeymoon holiday is next, and once it's ended, she will likely experience the anticlimax now that this eagerly awaited event in her life has been and gone. You now settle down into your domestic life and find yourself often being ignored. Not because she's mad at you, but because she'll always find the TV more appealing. You can convince yourself that you're spending time together, as you sit through the meaningless nonsense that she thinks she enjoys, reality TV shows, the shopping channel, etc. The next stage involves buying a house together, and as you can expect, the house you buy will be something too large and too expensive to maintain, but who cares, because you will be the one paying for it. She will fill this house with photos of herself, old photos when she was at her best, to convince herself she still looks this good. Your wife will put her stamp on the home you have together, to the extent that you will always feel like a visitor in your own home. Sometimes a welcome visitor, but often not. Because what women really want in their domestic life is a doll's house, over which they have complete control of everything, including you. This means filling up the doll's house with meaningless garbage, especially tasteless figurines and ornaments. Today's women cannot seem to stop shopping. It's an obsession, especially clothes. Most of these purchases will only keep them happy for a few hours until their moodiness resumes. Most of your meals together will be in strained silence or of the small talk variety. The usual topic of conversation will be, how was your day? And if nothing unusual has happened that day, you will end up saying the same things over and over again, just to fill up space. Because most women have no sense of intellectual curiosity and are not interested in things that do not or will not affect them in the near future. If you are interested in the world around you, you will not be able to bring them up to your mental level. Your wife will inhibit your mental development with triviality and irrelevance and be scornful of your attempts to improve your own mind. With so many women, the activity of the mouth is out of proportion with that of the brain, so you will be stuck with someone who talks a great deal, especially about themselves, but actually says very little. Your wife will often look for any excuse to have an argument and turn the smallest of problems into a full-blown row. If you are on a trip or vacation and you give too much attention to another couple, even if it's just for five minutes, you can expect jealousy and resentment. But you will be expected to visit her family and idiotic in-laws and you will be nagged if you don't show the appropriate level of enthusiasm. 
At home, she will endlessly interfere with your possessions in the guise of tidying up, to the point that you can't find important things when you really need them. If she's in a bad mood and you are happy, she will never be happy for you. Your cheerfulness will simply annoy her. If she comes home drunk and you ask her about her night, then you are jealous and possessive. If you don't ask her anything about her night, then you are uncaring. She will spend time with her friends telling them about what a useless loser you are. Your wife will always make you feel that she does far more in the relationship than you do, even if you are the only one with a job. Any bad things that you do, no matter how small, will never be forgotten and will be brought up endlessly in the future. If you manage to go out with your friends, she'll say, OK, have fun, but will say it in a voice that means, do not have fun, I don't want you to have fun. Eventually your wife will distance you from your friends as much as she can. Being a married man is like being in a cult, with attention and devotion being given only to the leader. She will make a great effort to prevent you from having a good time without her. In fact, the ball and chain analogy isn't quite accurate, because a ball and chain will give you some degree of freedom. What you have in marriage is a wall and chain in which your autonomy is completely taken from you. Over the years, she will chisel away at your self-esteem with remarks, insults, comparisons, criticism and general disdain for your existence, leaving you in emotional pieces as she moves on to the next unwitting victim. She knows that she can ass rape you in court at the drop of a hat if you do not fulfil the expectations she has of you. As a married man, you are constantly financially competing with the divorced version of you, so that if you don't give her as much money as him, she will get her friend the state to forcibly take it from you and give it to her. Eventually you decide that you can't take it anymore and you walk out. You rent a room somewhere and you consider going back on the dating scene. You try internet dating or searching the Lonely Hearts ads in the newspaper, not realising that people use hidden meanings when describing themselves. Curvy means fat. Cuddly means obese. Quirky is insane and new to the area means just been let out of prison. You go on a date, but you're so far removed from the dating scene, having been stuck in a marriage for many years, that you're not used to making funny or clever conversation. Those years have robbed your intellect and self-esteem. The cost of an impending divorce leads you reluctantly back to your wife, where the whole dismal and unfulfilling saga continues into old age. The message for men is clearer than ever before. Don't do it. Even when it's not truly awful, it's still shit. That cute, adorable and endearing cupcake you met years earlier will turn into a hostile, scowling and oppressive headcase by the time it's too late. You think you're marrying Cheryl from Curb Your Enthusiasm, but in fact you end up with Susie. Think of all the characteristics your wife could have. Narcissistic, arrogant, selfish, passive-aggressive, jealous, paranoid, lazy, manipulative, self-centred, boring, rude, haughty, dominating, demanding, intolerant, self-righteous, ignorant, impulsive, unstable, wasteful, reckless, irrational, stroppy, argumentative, bullying, vindictive, sociopathic, just to name a few. If your wife has even just one of these characteristics, you'll wish you hadn't married her. What are the chances she has many more? Around 50% of marriages end in divorce. Of the remaining 50%, how many couples stay together only because of the kids, for financial reasons, for religious reasons, because they're terrified of living alone or because they're too old to split up and start again, leaving a tiny number that you might call actually happy. Marriage is for women, not for men. There is no advantage at all for a man to get married. Remember, the woman you marry is not the woman you divorce. Instead, enjoy your single life, your money and your choices. Enjoy peace and quiet, calm, solitude, relaxation and your freedom. <laughs>